Welcome, I'm doing a mini series on the living wage, minimum wage, poverty wage, and how people qualify uh, for benefits through the state. Um, so the living wage is a study that is done every year by MIT and they do a deep dive into every single county in the United States to find out how much it costs to be able to afford to live there. This is just basic living expenses. So housing, food, medical expenses. This isn't like fancy vacations or anything like that. It's just your base wage that you need to make in order to afford to live somewhere. Um, and so where I live in Santa Cruz County, the new wage was just released um, a couple of weeks ago and it is $27.81. So that is quite a high number. It made a leap from around $21 an hour to $27.81. That is for a single person with no children. Um, if you are a single person with one child, it jumps to close to $53 an hour. Um, and then the living wage is also broken out based off of, you know, family size and, and number of children and whether one person is working or both people are working. So that's a lot of great information there. Um, it also breaks out what the costs are that they're including in um, their calculations. Um, the minimum wage here in Santa Cruz County is $15 an hour. So there's a big difference between the living wage, what people need to make in order to afford to live here, and the minimum wage. Now a little bit of history on the minimum wage is that um, it was created um, in the early 1900s uh, to lift people out of poverty. It was one of the programs that happened around the time of the Great Depression um, to help to eliminate the poverty that was happening across the entire country. So the idea was that the minimum wage would be an amount close to what a person needed in order to afford their basic living expenses. So now we're seeing a hundred years later, a great difference between what the minimum wage is and what the living wage is, what people actually need to make in order to afford to live where they live. In some places, Santa Cruz being one of the, um, the major, um, outliers or major indicators for um, this issue in in the country as a whole. Um, there's something else that's called the poverty wage. The poverty wage in our county is uh, $6 an hour. So if someone is working full-time only making $6 an hour or part-time and the equivalent to a full-time employee would be around $6 an hour. Um, so that wage means that a person would not be able to afford anything, right? No housing, no you know medical expenses, they might be able to get food. Um, our, the wage here um, in our county for you know two people, um, for someone to receive any public benefits um, is around $12 an hour. So if people are underemployed, that's, this is kind of a category where they can fall into, where they would qualify for things like Section 8 vouchers, which helps people to afford housing, SNAP benefits, um, which uh, enables people to buy food, and Medi-Cal, um, which is a medical benefit um, for people who are low income. Um, and these are such important life-changing programs for so many people. Um, I think that they are so important, especially as you look at the affordability of especially the county that, that I live in. Um, but when you look at that, right, there is a whole group of people making between that $12 an hour zone up to that $28 an hour zone where the living wage is that do not qualify for these benefits and yet still cannot afford to live here. And so that creates a lot of impacts on their well-being um, and their quality of life. Um, so these are just some things to keep in mind as you're deciding on how to create a compensation system for your organization.